Today we're going to do something special. We're going to see if we can beat Chimps mode using darts only. Now this is a video idea that actually someone proposed in one of my last videos and I thought this is going to be really interesting because darts are a very special projectile in BT6. They usually cannot pop lead balloons and usually they have some other weaknesses as well and when you take a look at all the towers that can shoot darts it's actually so much lower than you think and actually it's so much lower than I thought in the first place. So for example if we take a look at all the towers like for example the boomerang well that's ranks that's not darts. Taxure it's tax it's not darts it's the ninja shurikens the alchemist is somewhere potions the engineer is nails and when you take a look at all these towers and you take a look at all the heroes you're gonna realize that it's actually a very small amount of heroes and towers that use darts it's actually one hero and seven towers in total it's etienne's drones now if you take a look at the towers that use darts you're gonna quickly realize that what well, they don't exactly use darts all the time but their projectiles evolve as time moves by as you upgrade them so for example the dark monkey while well, the bottom path for example the crossbow master is bolts is not darts or uh, the sub actually becomes a reactor which is not darts and the millipath is the missile which is again not darts and then you have the grape shot on the buccaneer and everything else i'm not gonna go through everyone but i went ahead and i i singled out all these upgrades that use only darts i took at the end as the hero because that's the only hero whose drones can actually use darts as projectiles and using all these things let's see if we can beat chimps mode so the usual dart and sub start and looking at these towers you guys are going to notice a well a huge problem usually the dart projectiles in bt6 they don't pop lead balloons so unless there's some special interaction involved oh and let me just let me just get the uh are you gonna snipe that one nice thank you so usually these projectiles they don't pop lead balloons and uh you have to either buy a very specific upgrade or you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to basically get it to a fifth tier in order for the darts to pop lead balloons so for example we're talking about the carrier flagship it has to become a 502 so the darts that are being shot from the planes can actually pop leads if you take a look at the sub for example we need to have the millipad sub which is the heat tip darts in order for us to pop lead balloons and then the last one is going to be the special pop operations heli which wait a second are we fine i'm gonna get the bar darts actually because, well, the top hat is not going to work for this one. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be like a, like the dumb sub commander eventually. Well, at least that's the plan. We're going to see what happens. Now, in regards to the hero, I brought at the end. But the thing with at the end is that Eti is not 100% darts. Because the level 10 ability is the plane. It's the UCAV. And that thing, well, it doesn't shoot darts. That's like missiles or whatever. It's just rockets. When Etienne hits level 20, there's a huge problem the plane becomes passive and it starts using the missiles on its own so that is something that we cannot afford because that's going to eventually break the rules of the challenge so that is why i'm actually going to place at the end as as late as possible and i'm thinking into the 30s so that we can make sure he doesn't get level 20 and talking about it then i was kind of thinking do we have some sort of a calculator actually like is there like a community tool in which you can you can just pick your hero you can set the the round to which you want to place your hero and there is there a calculator which is going to show you what level your hero is going to be at a certain round i think that would be very interesting and uh, if, if you guys know about something like this uh, let me know in the comments but i have not heard about anything like this and that's why i uh well I, i'm i'm not gonna i don't have a plan for it yet so i'm just gonna go i'm gonna place him actually after round 30 and we're gonna see what happens okay so round 27 lead balloons incoming i'm gonna upgrade this up to 022 and i actually want to remove this thing and uh wait a minute does this reach the track even i don't think it does does it no it doesn't so it's not gonna be popping the lead balloons i should have had the sub a little bit wait actually can i fit one more because if i can I'm, I'm just gonna ditch this one and then the next one is gonna be our main one but i i think i saw a spot there didn't i so i feel like this might be a little bit of a better spot but i'm still not sure if this reaches so i'm just gonna oh it does okay okay so i guess you're the you're the man now <laughs> you're the guy so this this is gonna be called the sub commander we're also going to need to get at the as soon as possible uh, just because well we're kind of playing off of not wanting him to level up too fast but also we kind of need the camo detection because these subs are not going to have the advanced intel uh, and the problem with the advanced intel is that i can buy it but they're not going to be able to pop lead balloons and at the end actually comes in really nicely here with that okay so let's talk about the late game cell first of all we have the uh, we have the mob incoming so i'm gonna get ready for the mob i'm i was thinking of getting a knockback super actually but uh, we have to start going into well actually is that even a good idea maybe i should do something like this so I was thinking of having the knockback super as like this mid game tower, but then again, if I'm rushing the carrier flagship, it should be better to just do this, right? Just to get the destroyer. 
And so talking about the setup and how everything is gonna look like, I wanna have three towers in total by the time by the time we reach basically the 90s. That's gonna be very interesting if we can make it happen. So tower number one is gonna be the carrier flagship, which is gonna buff all the subs, and it can also pop lead boons. Tower number two is gonna be the sub commander, which is gonna basically allow us to, to do a little bit more damage to DDTs because they're all gonna be the dump subs. And tower number three is gonna be the special operations heli, so the marine, because that is that's basically the only three towers that we have that can actually pop lead balloons. But let's see how we do versus the Moab. I'm actually going to click the ability. I don't want to risk this. So let's just do it like this. These subs, I mean, they are 0 2, two. Yeah, nice. Okay, so the dart actually sniped the last one. But uh, yeah, these th the defense that we currently have is not spectacular. Something else that I did, by the way, because I was scared of Etienne and him uh, reaching level 20. And I just want to I just want to play this challenge, right? So what I did was I enabled selling. So if Etienne reaches level 20, I'm actually going to sell him. I'm, I'm not going to allow him to, to basically get the passive UCAV out. I'm going to sell him. We're not going to be cheating, guys. This is we're going to do it right. So, but hopefully he doesn't reach level 20 before round 100. Okay, so the next target is actually the carrier flagship, and the thing is, after getting the flagship, I was... Well, one of the towers is the sub-commander, as I mentioned, but I think I'm gonna skip the sub-commander, I'm gonna leave it for last, and I'm gonna get the special operations, because the range of these subs is just... It's way too small, guys. I mean, look at this thing. It's like a dark monkey range, because we're usually used to, to having... Let me actually place a dark monkey over it. Yeah, look at this range. It's like, it's like a 001 dart or something like that. So because this range is super small, I don't think it's going to be worth getting the sub commander second. I think we should be getting the special pop operations. That's going to be a little bit of microing of the heli plus using the ability. Okay, here it comes. Carrier flagship, there we go. So round 50, round 58, it came out to be, and it's just in time for the camel lead balloons. Even though we can pop them with the subs, but I don't think I want to rely on these guys because they're super weak. It's just, it's just like a couple of 022 subs. And now, now we have a, well, now we actually have some, some serious firepower that's going to, I don't think it's going to scale that well into the late game. It's going to be a bunch of mediocre towers, but when you combine them together, then it should be fine. So, uh, let me just start working onto the heli, actually. So, uh, I'm going to get a downdraft and I'm actually going to go for the bottom path and I'm going to micro this heli myself because the bottom path actually gives attack speed to the marine eventually. So, I don't mind microing this thing a little bit. And let's just let's just blow these guys back a little bit. Do we even care about it blowing them back? <laughs> how strong is the carrier flagship versus 63? It's it's very strong actually. I know how good this tower is because there was a time where the only strategy that I was basically doing on champs mode was the carrier flagship, and I kind of know how good this tower is. There haven't been any significant changes in this guy besides the fact that they uh, when you cross battle with the middle one. Uh, the the small planes now actually use um, use the grape shots for some reason, so that's a little bit of a change that they did. But in general, it's it's pretty much the same tower they used to be. Okay, so I have the money to buy the support Chinook, but I haven't bought it on purpose because round 76 is incoming, and I'm kind of questioning if whether or not the scary flagship is going to be able to take it down by itself. I'm going to use it the end's ability, by the way. But uh, yeah, let's just see what happens. And I'm going to move the heli back to the right corner so it doesn't create a regrow farm. But hopefully it takes care of this thing without creating a regrow farm. That is my main concern. Let's just pull him back a little bit. And there we go. Okay, that was that was a little bit close. But we take it down. So that's basically the green light, I think, to buy the support Chinook. This guy is way better at blowing back the ceramics, which is nice. And the uh, the special operations is up next with 32,000. So that's going to be probably in the 80s. Wait a minute. You guys know how I said I placed my sub in a bad spot? I just move it. Yeah, let me just let me just make sure these guys. Yeah, I can I can move both my subs actually. I didn't even think about this one. So let's just move these guys both towards the back and have one sub, which is gonna be the sub commander, and I'm gonna have him in a I'm gonna have him in a prime spot. I'm gonna have him in the best spot that you have ever seen. Let's move this guy to the back now, so the the space is freed up a little bit, and then I'm gonna move one of these guys like here. Basically below the buccaneer. Right here. I think that is the prime spot for, for these guys. And yeah, one of them is going to be a sub which which we can actually afford to buy. But again, we're not going to be buying it. I'm going to move the second one back. Let me... And we're going to have the money now. So let me just move the last sub, which... Can I have it in a place where it's going to hit the top track a little bit as well? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to leave it here. And then it's time. Let's get the special operations. So we have the Marine. And the Marine as well also uses darts, which I'm going to show you guys right now. There you go. So that's the tower that we're allowed to use and basically the thing with the marine if you guys don't know is that the cooldown and the duration are well the duration is a little bit longer than the cooldown so you can have two at a time actually like that and let me just take a look at Etienne. oh my god this is not looking good 
So this means that he is 100% going to get level 20. And that means that we are, well, 100% going, going to have to sell at the end. No. Oh my god. The bottom at like the 30s or something like that. Why is he leveling up so fast? Okay, so round 89. We're about to get the money for the sub commander. But I'm actually not going to buy it. I want to see how these two towers deal with DDTs by themselves. So I'm actually only going to have one marine versus these DDTs. Let's use it now. And we have the carrier flagship. So let's see how everything goes. Oh yeah, that's absolutely not good. We are we're gonna lose to 45 DDTs or 99. Let's assume Etienne doesn't. Oh my god, he's level 17. If we assume that Etienne doesn't get level 20 by round 95 and we survive 95, he's a hundred percent gonna get level 20 by round 99, and that's gonna be 45 DDTs basically. So unless the sub commander and a bunch of 024 subs like they just they just come in clutch i think that this run is actually gonna be toast okay that's nice so we have a couple more rounds left in us but i feel like well actually you know what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna be upgrading anything so our best towers that we can buy are actually zero two four subs i'm pretty sure at this point and uh yeah let's just let's just let me use the drones let me use everything because well this is probably gonna be the last round that we can do this on and let me just keep using this guy and hopefully we can beat this. I'm actually kind of microing this uh, this support unit. I'm, I'm having him at the back. And so far we seem to be dealing with them. But again, these are normal DDTs and we're absolutely not popping them the way that we should be. So uh, it's getting close. It's getting close. No, we have this. I'm pretty sure we have this. Yeah, we do. And that is... No, that's going to be around 97. So I was actually off by a couple of rounds. If I had placed at the end, it will, like the what? Maybe just to be safe, maybe like the 40s. I might have made a mistake. I'm going to sell him right now. And I'm going to buy him again. Because if we want to have a chance versus these 45 DETs, we're going to need the camo detection, right? Because these subs, they cannot see camo. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is such a ridiculous run, actually. No, I should have placed him a little bit later. What's the level? He's level 7. Okay, but thankfully there are no camos in this round, so we should be fine. We have 34,000, so we can spend all of that money onto basically whatever we want. It, it's just going to be 0 to 4 dollars, right? Because none of these other towers are actually useful. Maybe like a downdraft, or a, but nah, the Chinook is way too good. So no need for a downdraft, actually. And what else are we doing? I mean, hopefully the, the blowback from the Chinook is going to be enough. And hopefully those UMGs, well, hopefully we have enough time to pop them. Because it looks like we took care of the Fortify ones. But it's a huge mess over here. So we're going to have another marine ability. And these guys are going to need to clutch it up basically in the next few seconds. So uh, I have Etienne's ability. But that's like the weakest <laughs> the weakest drone swarm. But I'm going to use it anyways. We need all the damage that we can find. This support tunic is actually really good at blowing back these ceramics. Did they give him a buff or something like that? Oh my god. That was amazing. Okay. We need this now. But I feel like this is going to be the last round. Because there's no way we're dealing with these 45 DDTs. Is it? No, it's like one, two, three. Three popped. Four is no, nah, the four one isn't gonna pop. Okay, so here's what we have to do. We need to upgrade this guy to level eight so that we get camel detection on our subs. And basically it's just gonna be AP darts, I feel like. Is AP darts or zero two three sub more efficient? I'm not sure. I I'm I think zero two three might be more efficient for some reason. So let me let me do it like this. I guess the zero lining is that we have the carrier flagship and it's in the range of the carrier flagship, but the sub commander is actually so far back that, uh, well, we can't even fit that many in the range of the, uh, but let me just do it like this. Let me buy, let me buy, how many can we buy? Is that like, that's like one more. Yeah, that's about it. $500. Oh my God. That's, that's just right on the money. Okay. So that's about it. That there is nothing more that we can do. We have a Marine that's on the spot. We have the carrier flagship. I'm going to set this guy on strong. And then all of these guys, are we sending them to strong or first? Like, what's the deal with them? I, sh I should probably set them to strong, right? But I should also have a couple of them of first because someone needs to deal with the ceramics. And that should be fine. So hopefully this works. Hopefully the chin can blow back enough ceramics. And I should have this guy on strong as well. And then plays the new one. A new one goes on strong as well. Oh, that was a mistake. And then this has to be enough. If this isn't enough, then it's GG. Oh my god, it's so close. Yes, we took him down. Nice. Very good. <laughs> oh my god, it actually worked. And finally, the bat. Let's see what we can do versus him. Uh, I'm going to use the drone swarm ability, which does absolutely nothing. And then the, uh, I guess the, the big punch is going to come here when the when the bat is over here in the, in the water space. So, uh, yeah, hopefully. Let me just move everyone to first. Oh, this guy was in first the whole time. 
Let me just move all these guys to first because we don't need them as strong anymore. Or do we? They're gonna be some DDTs. Oh no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. And there it is. There we go. So we actually beat it using only darts. That is that's actually crazy. How how little things can pop lead balloons? Actually, it's actually crazy how little darts in the game can pop lead balloons. But uh, yeah, with the correct cross paths, or in this case, the uh, I guess the incorrect cross paths, you can absolutely do it. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.